here, and we really appreciate that. Uh, let's start with a word of prayer, please, if we'll all bow together. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for who you are, and we thank you for the fact that you created us and gave us a tremendous gift in Christ. Um, with that, with that rebirth, with that strength, with that guidance, you've taken us a long way, and you've given us hope, and you've given us a future. And as we look to that future today, we ask that we would be seeking your will first, and we'd be setting ours aside. We ask for your direction, for your wisdom, for your guidance today as we gather together and look at the future for grace. In Christ's name, amen. All right, uh, we were just kind of reflecting on timelines, and I found it hard to believe that the building committee has been together for almost three years now. And then looking back a little further, I think it was more like eight years that a bunch of us kind of gathered together and said, you know, the number of people who are coming through the doors at Grace are making it more and more difficult to accommodate just the sheer numbers. And that's a great problem to have. We're excited about that. Uh, none of us felt good about the concept of saying there's not enough room for you here. And we know that from just demographic numbers that once a body reaches about 80% of capacity, that's essentially the message that's given, whether they circle the parking lot and decide, well, I'm just going to go to brunch because I can't find a spot, or it's tough to find a place to sit in second service. All of those things factor in, and we just decided we didn't want to be saying no to the people that were coming to us. And that was pretty critical. So as that group started to form, and then eventually we started bringing in consultants, and eventually the team that we'll talk about today, which is Station 19 out of Minneapolis, all of that was looking forward to the basic simple fact of how do we have an open door to the people that are coming to us? How do we have an open door and an open seat to the people who actually want to be a part of what's going on at Grace? And nobody felt good about saying there's not enough room or saying no to that person. And that's really what all of that culminates in today. Um, we don't want to get confused about why we're here. We don't want to get confused about what we're doing. The building committee doesn't have some secret agenda that we're trying to impose or a pet project or whatever it is. We simply want to get to the correct conclusion about where we should go as a body. And that's what today is a part of. You're going to have an opportunity to give input today. Uh, we tried to come up with a good way to do it, and passing the mic is sometimes difficult and confusing, and we've got so many people. So this is a little bit beyond my technological ability, but we're actually going to be able to text questions from where you're sitting, and then the team will field them as we do that. Um, so again, if you're like me, maybe you'll just want to raise your hand and yell later on, but we're going to try to do everything through text through texting and try to keep it orderly a little bit, and we'll get to that question part as we go on down the road. Um, I just want to keep in mind um, from the whole group, and especially from the, the team, the building team that we've been working on this, and as we've tried to approach this from a point of humility, try to approach it from the point that, yeah, maybe I like plan B over plan C, but, you know, as we look at everything and we come to a sort of a conclusion as far as a group, we realize that's the best path to take. And so we've tried to come at it with humility, tried to do the very best we could do, and a lot of the things you're going to hear today, nothing is set in stone. These are options that we're looking at. We've got some preliminary schematics and some uh, drawings about what possibilities it could be, phases uh, of the project, and we're going to try to present those to you uh, to the best of our ability. If we come to a question that we can't answer, we'll simply tell you, we don't have the answer to that right now, or defer it to another team member. So with that, we're going to proceed on. I'm going to have Paul come up. I think you're next in the line here. And Paul's going to give a little introduction and uh, set us on the course for the building committee's work. Thank you, Terrell. Um, I know what uh, Terrell would also, uh, his heart in this for sure, to communicate for us all, though, is that we would want to move forward in a prayerful dependence. And so these things are things that we're just looking in terms of options, but how do we continue to creatively bring this before the Lord then? You know, the psalmist put it this way, it says, our eyes, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are stayed upon you. And as a congregation, that is certainly the case of what we're doing. Um, one thing, uh, Pastor Terrell over here started from recent time, one thing that's been going on 
just in terms of prayers, we're not only about the process of a building, but all things is that uh, we have a prayer time even on Sunday mornings. And we're just before anything really starts moving on in the building. And anyone's always welcome to join us. And then the East Wing, we just want to see that God would be lifted up and some good things here would indeed run wild. So quickly, I have the opportunity to introduce you here and just a few things to at least some key concepts of what we're looking at in terms of a building project with Grace Community, specifically for the North Liberty Campus. I also have the privilege of introducing to you our team members as well. Uh, so firstly, though, let me talk to you about a key version verse that's been a guiding verse for us. And uh, to explain that well, I need to make sure to lay the groundwork appropriately for, again, why we're after what we're doing in terms of a church. Carol touched on a few of those things. Um, but what we're after is, first of all, is for accessibility. We want to make sure that there are people that are able to come in and hear the gospel and be part. Secondly, it was also about community. Uh, the idea here is that we're trying to foster biblical community amongst everyone that calls Grace Community Church their home. And uh, at this point, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that our foyer doesn't necessarily say, hey, let's encourage community and get friendships. It's more like, let's see what I can do to survive the foyer this day. You know, and uh, that just really doesn't really keep in line well with our mission. And uh, as we seek to bless, bless the outward community as well, we want to try to continue to do what we can in that regard to where we um, have space and place for uh, significant things um, in our facilities. We want to equip the body. Last, We want to equip them well. We've had the opportunity over the years now to plant several churches. We want to continue to be a hub of sending and of continuing to network the body of Christ effectually in this area. So this is all about continuing to gain momentum for the kingdom of God. That all being said, a good guiding verse for us has been from the book of Proverbs, chapter 24. Because what we're saying is we want a life that is a wise life. Proverbs 24, verses 3 through 4 says, By wisdom a house is built. Through understanding it is established. And yet through the Hebrew word there is yada, to know by experience it's its home is filled with rare and beautiful treasures. So wisely, we want to make sure that Jesus continues to be preeminent in all things we say and do. And we're talking about really the wisdom of building a life that way. And certainly we look to see our building program uh, patterned after this. We seek to have then that not just known about what we should do, but then we actually go and we do it. We implement it. We apply it. And because when we do that, when we know that experientially, its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures, which is the desire of what we have for each person who is part of Grace Community. Because ultimately, the most effectual building of all is the building of the temple of the Holy Spirit for each believer. And so we just want to see that those things are supported exceedingly well. So let me open us in prayer, and then I'm going to have the privilege of introducing to you some folks who have worked very hard on our collective behalf. Um, as Terrell pointed out here, about three years ago, the elders came together and said, we need to have a group of people to really help us move through the process of where we've been and where we need to go. And I'll tell you what, um, hmm. I'm going to try to uh, at least share somewhat briefly how they have worked and done that so generously and so kindly, this group of people over these many years. So let me open us in prayer, and uh, we'll get some introductions. Father, so in this time, we commit it to you, and we would ask that you would do all things here exceedingly well. Our heart's desire is that your name would be lifted up, that we would continue to be a significant um, player in the things that are on your heart, that your mission is run well, that we continue to gain momentum effectually. Lord, we do not want to become a monument. We want to be a movement and beyond. And so to those ends, we pray, Lord, that you would help us to um, harness the resources entrusted to us and make plans accordingly. And we give you this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right, for a few introductions, and I'll come back around 
then to our very next steps today. So uh, first off, just would share that I'm going to have maybe, sorry, you at least need to turn and wave, okay? Is that okay? Can you just do the, the little wave? Is that fair? And so we know, you know, everyone can recognize and the building committee as a whole, you'll see me, I'll be looking here to my left, they're seated here. And so uh, our chair for our building committee is Ryan McFadden, who is our director of facilities. Uh, Ryan has been on staff now for a few years and has done a significant amount of work in providing a fantastic service in helping to guide our overall process. Terrell is another one of our pastors that's on the building committee that has uh, continued to serve as a tireless voice of both reason and expectation. So they work together very well. And Terrell, your presence has been incredibly appreciated um, in this time. Angie Miller, amongst other things, she is probably one of the most effective minutes taker ever in the history of humankind. Tell you what, there are marathon meetings that this girl is able to accomplish and able to listen through. She listens through it not once, but she goes through the torture of recording it and listening twice, so at least twice, sometimes three times, right? So she goes through it all and she records it so we really recognize where we've been to where we need to go. And with Angie, we needed someone who really had not only a working understanding of those things, but really knew the heart and the culture of Grace Community. And Angie and Chuck have been around for 15 years years, and for good or for ill, shoot, from your very beginning time, she was in one of my community groups, so if they're dysfunctional in their Christianity, you can blame the Hansons, so that was uh, probably set a long time ago. Chris Engel, Chris Engel, who is also on our building committee, Chris comes with a wealth of experience of small businesses and um, has just been a very, very helpful individual to help us make our next wisest decisions along the road, and that's been really fantastic, so Chris, thank you. Martha Stokes, tell you what, we actually, well, the blessing is, and for those of you who don't know this, not only did Chris marry way up, I actually, I was there, I married them, so I know this to be true, of course, uh, but uh, the fact is that uh, we have, through Martha, a, a person who is an architect as well, in-house within our very own uh, group from Grace Community, as well as some wonderful architects I'm going to get the opportunity to introduce to you. And so just having Martha's expertise, her working knowledge, and her overall, s <laughs> I meant to say savviness, I almost said sassiness, but I'm not sure, maybe that was right. Maybe that was prophetic. Um, that might be both of those things. Sazzy, whatever, those things, that we see them together. So um, Matt Keister. Matt Keister has been a fantastic add into our group. He wasn't there at the very beginning, but he did make his way in both, both to our committee as well as our hearts. Uh, Matt uh, runs Ryan, is part of Ryan Companies and comes with a lot of construction experience and his ability to really see some of the things that we need to see on that level has been very good. He continues with us as, he, as his firm is not bidding for our project, so um, we're able to continue to utilize a lot of his background and uh, Matt, that's been invaluable. Valuable. Vaughn, Vaughn, are you here? Vaughn Stang, he's not here. Okay. So Vaughn, he's a senior director of university housing and, and dining at the University of Iowa. He's walked through a number of campaigns uh, where they've had a take on um, obviously some, some new housing opportunities for the University of Iowa. And so just his background and the experience of this not being his first rodeo by any stretch of the imagination has been a very big help to us. And both of, uh, the next thing I would like to do is introduce to you both our architects. Okay, so if you guys could both stand and wave from station 19. Here we go, so I'm gonna make you guys stand up, so. And I'm gonna refrain from introducing much more of them because that's a special thing I'm gonna give to Ryan to do as he comes up here in just a moment. So those are our team members, and so we are just so grateful for each and every one of those. A couple other names I just would like to make note of, even though they're not officially part of our committee. Um, Eric Engel, he has served us tirelessly. He is part of Grace Community, and Eric is a commercial realtor. And for those of you who could not see this process, but as we were going through all the works of vetting land and making decisions about that, shoot, there was a ton of time that went into that overall
overall process. And so, Eric, I'm not sure if you're here now, but I just want to say thank you. Your work in that regard was super, super helpful. Tony Herring, also not part of the committee formally right now, as his firm is bidding on our project, but Tony put in a lot of time and a lot of work. And so, I guess what I want you to hear in all of this is that these folks are here ultimately because they want to serve the Lord, and secondly, because they love you as their brothers and sisters in Christ. And so, if you'd be so kind, could you just give it up for the building committee of Grace Community Church? All right, I am now going to ask Ryan McFadden, the chair of the building committee, to come up. And the Station 19 Architects will be your opportunity to introduce. Thank you, everyone. So before I bring up Station 19, I wanted this on record is a couple of things. First of all, for those who may say, hey, don't know if somebody was able to attend it, we are recording it, and it will be available tomorrow night. So we'll be having this video, the whole entire presentation uh, regarding to this. So the one part is I want to put it on record is how we selected our design firm. I think it's very important that to know that it wasn't just a whim out of the air. There was actually a strong, rigorous vetting process that we did. And what we did as a building committee is kind of experience working at the University of Iowa. I used to work with Von Stange as we're looking at the $54 million residence hall of Peterson. They had a strong vetting process they had to do which involved a few things. And we kind of did the same concept and incorporate here at Grace. So the first thing we did is I interviewed seven uh, architect firms that had worship experience. They had experience working with churches or they 100% worked with churches. That's all the firm did. Out there, we narrowed down to three firms that we want to proceed forward into the next process. Our building committee, what we did, is invite all three firms to the campus to do an informal meeting. We asked the firms to come, get a tour of the campus, to see how it is, answer our questions, and they met with us for a couple of hours, and we asked, do you want to continue moving forward with the process? And let me tell you, we had three really strong candidates, and it was a blessing to have them. The next part of the phase is more of a structure. The team developed a scoring criteria matrix that we did on the scoring on one, a request for qualification in RFQ, each design firm had to submit an RFQ to us for review, along with references. The second thing is that we did on a Sunday after service is had all three design firms do a presentation with the building committee along with a Q&A, back to back to back. From there, we narrowed down to two firms and we did reference checks. And let me tell you, it's very important to do reference checks because here's where we found out. We did 10 reference checks on the two firms. Five churches that have already completed the projects and five churches they were already in the progress. At the end, it helped to make our decision stronger for the recommendations to Station 19. I got to meet Station 19 back in November 2015 at a conference, and the first person I met was Nicole Thompson, the president of Station 19. From there, every time we met with them, every time we asked them a question, every time that we had demand, they fulfilled that. They were consistent on all across the board through the scoring sheet. They actually were one of the highest ones on there. Through there, we go through the steps of the process of coming in, and there were things that they were not just a design firm. They were a consulting firm in its end. The first process that we did was coming, meet our in, uh, ministries, finding all the data in the last three years, and we found out through the second service here during the school year we're using 120% of our facilities by person per capita. We're 20% over users, people. That's a great problem, but it's a problem, okay? We didn't notice that. You should have seen it in our, we're in 304, 305 with all of our staff, elders, and, board, and building committee, and everybody's like this. I mean, it, it was flabbergasted of how much, and they provided more details for us that we saw not just a building, but some ministry challenges. We walked more through them, but here's the one thing I took away from the conference where I first went to. The conference that said this, and it was a presentation I went to that was an architect and a pastor, and he said this. If the first thing that an architect says, how many seats do you want in your auditorium? Turn around and run. They're not interested in your DNA. They're not interested in what makes your church. That wasn't the first thing at Station 19. They asked, Industries. What's so unique about you guys? So it's been fun. It's been exciting. 
and we're looking forward to continuing work, working with them. But I think it's time that we get to the main presentation. You guys excited? All right. So I'd like to welcome to our stage Nicole, Tam, uh, Nicole Thompson and Manny McCulley from Station 19. Well, I hope we live up to that announcement of all of us. Wow. Um, it's been quite a journey that we've been on with your team, and we're just so appreciative that all of you are out here tonight, today, not night night, the sun's shining through here. Um, I just got to lift this up here because I have some notes. Um, but we're so excited to share this preliminary concept, and, you know, we come and we get to present to you the two of us, but there's been four of us working on your project. There's been four registered architects, um, maybe five, um, depending, on, depending the on the day. <laughs> um, because it's that this important that we want to create a facility that really reflects who you are in your mission and vision and ministry. And we want to do the right thing for your ministry, um, not just the cool thing. Um, so that's, that's our heart and passion. So I'm, we brought a little picture of where we live because people say, why are you called Station 19 Architects? And so we've been living in the old fire station 19 in, that's right on the University of Minnesota campus. And we've been in that building 40 years um, as an architecture firm. So, and our mission and vision for serving ministries is to serve growing quality ministries together. Uh, when you're serving a growing ministry, we want to create a quality product, and we serve a lot of different ministries. So we've been serving ministries for over 45 years. We've served over 700 ministries nationally. Um, and so we work about 75 to 80% of our work is with churches, and then we also work on Christian schools, camps, and then we also work with a para-ministry in supportive housing, if you're familiar with Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge, which is a drug and alcohol rehabilitation, but all faith-based um, clients that we work with. You can see our team of 10, and there's just two of us here today, but this is our crew. Um, I've been with the company about 20 years, will be my anniversary next Friday, gulp. And I've been president of the company for about 10 years, and I just celebrated that anniversary a couple weeks ago. Um, so I have an undergraduate degree in interior design from the University of Madison, and then I went on to the East Coast and got my master's degree in architecture. So, and got a little experience in Chicago before I came back and took over the family farm. So I'm a second generation owner of the company and bought the company from my father who founded the company to serve ministries um, because of the organizational challenge it takes to put a building together. Um, how do you get it empowerment and how do you uh, get generosity to put a project together? Yeah, so well, you've got a mic. I have this, I don't know if it's on, it is on, fantastic. I'm Mandy and I've been with Station 19 for about four years and I'm actually an Iowa native. So for me, this is coming home and feels very much like home in general. So it's, it's fun to serve here. Um, I graduated from Iowa State with an architecture degree and spent some time practicing in the Seattle region before coming back to Minneapolis and joining the Station 19 team. And what I love about it is really a lot of the same things that Nicole has said, but just in terms of being able to serve such a diverse group of people that are willing to put their hearts on the line for the kingdom of God. It's fantastic. I couldn't ask for more. So. Well, we're going to... Enough about us. Yeah. Let's get to Grace Community. Yeah. Um, but we wanted to give you a little snapshot of where we live and why we're here. And we love serving so many different types of ministries. Um, but what, you know, as Ryan and Paul said, we always start here. This is why we're here. Uh, we're here because of your mission and vision for ministry. And we're here listening and gathering information because God has blessed you in this ministry in North Liberty um, in this time. And ultimately, we know you all are called to preach the gospel, and it's about Jesus. It's not about us. It's not about the building. The church is a people. Uh, so... We want to be good stewards for the legacy that's been laid before you here at, at Grace Community. Um, and it's now it's time for your legacy for the next generation to be ready. 
and we look around and we see the development that's going on here in North Liberty, and, and as Paul was saying, is having the front door open and having the space to welcome people in is our, our goal and um, our, for the project. What we've come, we've started as your church planners and we've brought a fresh eyes perspective to the site and facility, like your new guests. Um, and so we started with your mission and vision. So we started, you know, we want to, we always look back to this, uh, that to glorify God by being and making disciples who make disciples. To bring in, build up, and branch out. And how can the facility better reflect that to the community of North Liberty? So what we're going to show you today is just a preliminary master plan concept. And we've prioritized the preliminary master plan into a phase one and a phase one and two plan for you. Um, and this is a reflection of the surveys that you took back in 2017, remember that? We got all that information and our first meeting started with dissecting all of that. Uh, and so we've also spent time out here listening in the beginning of January, or I'm sorry, the end of January of 2018. So we've been working with your committee over the last 18 months, and we've had five meetings, not that many meetings, and we've had a lot of twists and turns along the way. So what we're gonna show you today are, is, is a single direction that's preliminary, that's a concept, but I mean, it took a process to do this, to get to this point. We looked at staying as an option, we looked at staying and maybe going partially, we looked at going all together, um, looking at a new site. And ultimately, we're gonna show you an option to stay on site here at this location. So when we came out and listened in January 31st of 2018, this is a snapshot of like 40 some pages of notes that I took with your leadership. It was an all day event, it was wonderful, and it was just kind of, how fast could Nicole write for the day? <laughs> but what I love about this snapshot, and our team puts this together, where, I mean, there is more to say, um, but I love it because it kind of, it, it's, it gets over the, the big picture pieces to train and equip, more parking. Um, you're just short space here, y'all. <laughs> um, uh, space for groups, you know, the 100 to 150 size groups. Um, place that it's warm, comfy, comfortable, casual. I love being here and watching you all come in and leave service and just your hospitality is your heart and core of who you are. Um, so this is um, a big deal and you can see up at the beginning, the first meeting that I had with Brooks was we want to be a movement, not a building. And that was in the first minute of our conversations, and so that set the tone and set the table uh, for who you are. So out of it, we got a list of project priorities from your team. We heard them, accessibility, community, um, but we started to call out how that would look as we're moving forward. So our project priorities that we pulled out of all that listening and um, simplified from the list that we received from your team is we want to expand the worship center. That 930 service has been full for four years or more, um, in anywhere from 80 to 88% full in, in your worship space. Um, the fun thing that we learned over the listening was anytime you planted a church or opened a new location, maybe 200 seats would open, but within two weeks, it'd fill right back up again at that 930. People were coming. You wonder how many people might be tur turned away because it's full, the, har the parking lot is full. So an opportunity to improve. The second one is in strengthening your hospitality. So your lobby, we, we got to watch that today. <laughs> um, so to improve your wayfinding um, and accessible. And then ex strengthening that exterior identity. We'll look at a picture in a little later. Um, as that really that pivotal view as you're driving south on Dubuque Street, what an opportunity to say welcome and come and learn about the gospel. And then lastly but not least, these are not in order of priority, um, is that improved education space for all ages for that build up portion of your bring in, build up, and branch out. I'm 
hitting the button, but nothing's happening. Am I pointing the wrong way? Next slide, please. Okay. So each meeting, this is a little snapshot of the inner workings of our team. Each meeting that we prepared for you, this is what our whiteboard looked like. Um, and this is just gives you an idea of the time and effort that went into what we're going to share with you today. So um, this just gives you an inside working to our team. We have a, a, a conference room that we call our... Um, it's our collaboration room, and that's where we come in and we pull all of our team together and we work together on your behalf. Next slide. So again, when we start, we start with your mission and vision, but we also need to understand your DNA. So we look at the, all the numbers. We're kind of numbers junkies. And I'm gonna try and zip through this quickly, but what's important about these numbers is we're building a facility as a tool for your ministry and we're looking at the people that are coming. We wanna plan for you, but we also wanna plan for the future. So we start with your numbers now. So these are your 2018 worship attendance numbers. And because we're trying to right size the worship auditorium for the future, because we got a range from your team. We don't know how big it should be. And they asked us the question. I said, well, we need to learn about your DNA and how many people are coming and then project out. So we know in 2018, and these are already old numbers, um, 950 people were coming on average. But you can see those three services, how they're splitting out. So 24% come to 8 a.m., 47 at 9.30, and 29% at 11 a.m. It's a pretty good split. Because a lot of churches we serve with an 8 a.m. service, there's like 6 to 10% coming at 8 a.m. So this is really good. And I kind of want to clap for Grace Community. Um, but look at the 9.30 a.m. service. It's 81% full. We say 80% is your maximum comfort. You're mm -hmm. turning people away. They're coming in. There isn't a seat for them. Um, and that's like an urban number. What we see in more rural and suburban is maybe 70%, 75%. So, and that's pretty low for some of the years. Some years have been more like 88%. But not to forget that the, what we want to be cognizant of is the 50% minimum comfort. So we want to plan a space that will also accommodate people that if we're half full or less than half full, there's also a negative perception is, is anybody here? Why isn't anybody here today? So there's two things that we're trying to plan for when we're looking at that. The numbers at the bottom for Christmas and Easter, we say are, we say are God's gift to you or an opportunity of where you could potentially grow. So what we're trying to understand is how, what size do we plan for for the future? So just remember those numbers as a potential goal for planning for facility. Um, these aren't stated numbers from leadership that we want to reach these goals, but how do we plan so that we're right sizing the space? Next slide. Thank you. So again, we look at your education attendance. And what's really unique about you is that 930 hour and a lot of the education for adults that's going on concurrently and maybe lack of space for adult <laughs> meeting that we want to improve, right? Um, so one thing we're looking, it's really strong, um, 584 people. And why are we looking at this component? We want to look at your DNA, again, your fingerprint, and what are the, what's the participation of education to worship if we build a larger worship auditorium, then how can we extrapolate the right size of education that you might need? So these are important numbers for us to help plan for you. So we're focusing on that, but please note that 930 hour at 325 people, and that's an average. We know there's highs and lows, and we also know that that number has come down because you've been maxed out, right? Because look, you have 15 rooms at about 10,500 square feet. Mandy and I are both rounders, so we won't, if you're an engineer, you, you'll notice we'll round it. Um, but that will serve 300 people at one hour. How many are coming to 930? 325. We need, right out of the chute, 
11,000 almost going on 12,000 square feet of education space to serve what you're doing today. So we need more space, the right spaces in the right places, and we also need to secure that kids area. I could stroll down the, the kids corridor today um, counting ceiling tiles, which us nerdy architects do. So, um, <laughs> But out of the gate, you're short, and just as Paul was talking about, next slide. So what is your vision to serve people? Uh, we know you're serving 950 in worship um, between the three services. If we had a, p a possible five-year goal focusing on the opportunity of Christmas and Easter, we might say 1,750 people. Just a starting point. Okay, well, what does that mean? How, do, how many services and how big of a space would we need to serve 1,750 people as a possible goal using Christmas and Easter as our benchmark? Well, if you use your current split of your 8 a.m., 9.30, and 11 a.m., we would need about 1,100 seats to serve that number of people. So um, that's a starting point um, for us as we're looking forward. Next slide. So we looked at a range, because we do, um, because we want to look at a must, need, and a want. We're always looking at how do we scale the project based on the capability we have or the budget of our client, um, and how many people can that serve over the growth as you grow. Uh, so we looked at different sizes, and you're going to see these as Mandy is going to talk about all the plans here in just a minute. So she does. She will not be quiet for long. Um, so we're starting with how many people does 800 seats serve, which is about 250 seats larger than what you have here. Um, you can see that it would serve about 1,100 people at two hours and 1,600 people at three hours if you had a more even split. That doesn't quite get us to 1,750, right? 1,100 seats, though, you could serve about 1,500 people at two hours or 2,200 people at three hours. So you can see we're getting closer to reaching that potential five-year um, Christmas and Easter goal. And then way out there, long range, what would happen if you had 1,650 seats? And again, that came out of some conversations we had with the building committee. So we have that range that you'll see today in the preliminary concepts of what does that mean and how much education does that translate to. Next slide. So what we did and what we were asked by our committee, I I'm, I'm promise I won't go through everything on this chart, but the purpose of this chart is really to kind of demonstrate the process that we've gone through with your committee because if we're proposing a certain size worship auditorium, at what point, if we're growing at 7 to 10%, because you did grow from 16 to 17, 18, I'm sorry, 8%, we wanna be sure we're kind of looking and projecting out, well, how long would we last in a space of 800 seats if we continue to grow at seven to 10%? So you can see in an 800 seater, we'll, we'll probably be at three services right away um, uh, in 2024. Uh, we could be at two services at the 1100 seat, but you can see as it projects out, um, we're going to be wanting to talk about another expansion of the worship center in anywhere from five to seven years um, if you continue to grow at 7%. So we're looking at where's the threshold of growth, at what point will we outgrow, how many services can we do. And one of the options we looked at, we looked at several, we looked at the do nothing adding more worship hours um, or adding space. Because when you're full or above 80% full, the question is, what do we do? You either add more hours, add more seats, or you're turning people away. And I don't think it's Grace Community's heart to turn people away. Next slide. But where are you? <laughs> um, what a great opportunity you have in this location. Um, the community context is incredible and the growth that's around you and your visibility um, as you come south on Dubuque. That's how we always arrive here. I think I've only come once when I drove from Altoona. I came the other way and I was like, where am I? Because um, I always come south on Dubuque. 
Um, but the incredible opportunity of that corner, uh, you've got about eight and third acres here, but also your relationship and opportunity for ministry with the high school uh, for students uh, and reaching out and being an after school place or um, whatever that looks like in the future. But just that location, and that was important during the listening, how important being here was. We looked at options of purchasing land and relocating, but staying close by. But we ran into challenges of multi-party, needing multi-party deals, and we needed access and, uh, to Dubuque Street. And really, ultimately, your committee was feeling led by the Lord to stay here and see what we could do uh, um, to remodel or add on to this location. Um, next slide. So again, we have 8.32 acres. Um, we do a little site analysis. We know how many square feet. You've got just under 40,000 square feet of building. And you've got about 212 paved parking stalls. And we focus on the paved, because that's a hospitality piece. Uh, we know you have about 100 stalls on the gravel on the south side of the site. The challenge is, is it's maybe not always 100. That's us laying it out all nice and neat in the computer. Um, but you probably are going to get about 80 cars out there. Um, so we look at 212 parking stalls and paved. We'd say for a 550-seater, you'd want about 275 paved stalls to serve this worship space. So we'd say right out of the gate, you're short about 63 paved stalls. Um, but again, you're making it work. <laughs> um, the other thing we notice is the northwest winter winds are coming right in your front door. Um, now, typically, we recommend putting your entries on the southeast side for environmental in our climate because January and February aren't the most lovely times of year. Um, and coming in on the north side is cold. Um, to put it mildly, and I'm from Minnesota, and it's a little colder than here. But, however, given your location at this spot, that's your identity. That's what everyone will see. So where we would say, boy, it'd be really nice to have a southeast entry, that's your visibility to the community. Um, so we're saying, how can we improve that south experience as part of our look at the building? Um, so, again, the existing building. Next slide. Again, for the numbers, folks, this is how we look at how much coverage you've got on the site or the civil engineers that are in the room. Um, but we know right now that you're about 34% coverage. We have talked to the city, and they said we can go to the building setbacks. We have never done that. Um, the maximum site that we've gone to is 75%. So we kind of took that as a rule of thumb for us. Um, moving forward for your project. Uh, so we know we're going to need to do some ponding potentially and how are we going to need to do that. So our goal is about 75 maximum for hard coverage, meaning parking lot, paved parking lot, and building. So that's our goal um, through the project that Mandy will talk through. Next slide. So here's that view from Dubuque Street. Um, and one thing that impressed me the first time I came um, was just how full and the worship attendance numbers with, with this facility. Um, and just the facility doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not about the facility. It's really who's inside and that draws people in and the, and the good food that is being served here. Um, but we look at this view as an opportunity for you to improve and to bring, um, change your identity to the community because this view is so, seems so introspective um, and kind of closed off from the community versus what you're trying to communicate through your, your mission and your vision for ministry. Next slide. We also analyzed your building, and we know there's a couple phases that have occurred here, and it, it shows, it looks like it. <laughs> um, just in, in the approach, kind of our biggest things, we know your main entrance is on the north, which captures most of your parking, and watching how people flow in today, that's how everyone comes in. Um, the other big thing we notice is your lobby is about 35% of your worship center, 
Since 1999, about the vintage of some of these phases, we've been designing lobbies about 100% the size of your worship center. So we would say, you need more lobby. <laughs> Um, and it, right now, because of how it functions between the gym and your worship center, it functions like a hallway. The width is perfect for circulation, mm -hmm. but needs more space for those connections and prayer to occur. Um, so that's kind of our big piece. The other one are the narrow hallways. I remember walking around on the first tour with the building committee and just, I'm like, where am I? <laughs> how did we get here? Um, we're snaking through like three foot wide doors and oh, we go through the gym here and I'm like, what? So, and then the narrow hallways. So part of ours is how do you get the kids secure and have hospitalities in the hallways too, in the corridors. I mean, we're designing hallways at 16 feet wide because parents want to connect there too. Um, sometimes you're just glad you made it to church, right? Um, because you might have church out there. Um, so again, looking at how to improve that, and, and especially for your new guests, um, and improve your student ministry. Right now, you're upstairs that's inaccessible and in a dead end corridor. <laughs> so just how can we improve that experience for students um, to bring them into the fold and be a part of your, your ministry? Um, we know the gym's an important piece of your ministry. Um, as it's used uh, from the community as well as you. Um, yes, uh, well, it's going to be better. Next slide. <laughs> so we took pictures, you know, we came out, and, um, but I think the biggest thing, and Mandy and I were talking, getting ready, and just even the way the ceiling is sloped in the, in, in the lobby, it just um, is narrow to Dubuque's, street or shallow and just how could we lift that up and really have that welcome and we want to be respectful because there's been sacrificial giving from those that have gone before us and how do we build on that um, is what we're looking at and again your hallway experience and your worship experience how can they improve um, and be a reflection of you when a new guest comes next slide so here's our goals that we had on the, on the left side is your eye chart that I'm not going to expect you all to read, but on the right are our goals with what we have here. When we did a program today, if you were not to grow at all, and um, we did the program with your building committee, we went through that for all your spaces and that you're short 10,000 square feet just today um, if you were to not plan for growth. Um, and those areas are in worship, to serve the number of people that are coming, to facilitate that 9.30 a.m. hour. Um, the second one is your lobby. And we give a range. We say a minimum of 50% up to 100%. Because we need to be cognizant of budget as well as what's the right size, right? The other one is maintain the use of the gym as much as possible. And then we need to increase education for kids and adults and then make that education secure for kiddos. Um, administration needs to increase too. We've got a growing staff and they're making lemonade um, out of the spaces they've got. And then also just the fun thing and the unique thing about Grace is the biblical counseling and having the right space. Uh, for that ministry to really disciple people and minister to people in a very um, respectful way. So you can see we're short there. So I'm going to turn this over to Mandy, and she is going to run through the, the, preliminary, the preliminary concepts. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Nicole. So with all of that background information, what we started to do was we started to look at how could this become a reality here at Grace Community. And we are looking at that in terms of, as Nicole mentioned, those phases. So let's start with that, this is an immediate need, here's where we'd like to go, and then a long-term plan. So if we start off with, this isn't gonna work, next slide. We start off with that, the numbers, this is how we 
get a hold on how big the building is gonna be. So this is where we start, and we can start to plan how much space we actually need. Based off of here, we started our phase one at an 800 seat program. So that 800 seats we know doesn't quite get us to the goal of 1750, but it's a really good starting point to serve our needs where we're at now and into the future. So what we can see here is we're adding 250 seats. We're getting more space in our lobby, so we're improving that hospitality, we're improving that visibility to Dubuque. We're looking at increasing some for the kids and getting that secure, so increasing education for kids, for adults, and then we're looking at the admin space, so we're making that functional, combining that, so there's collaborative spaces, and that we have a vision for that biblical counseling piece as well. And so overall, you can see at the bottom, we're looking at adding 16,400 square feet. I'm rounding again. <laughs> And then also from the exterior, we need to keep that in mind as well. And so we're looking at increasing the amount of paved stalls so we can serve that 800 seat sanctuary space. So if we go to the next slide, we can look at what that means from a site. And straight off the bat, you can see that Dubuque Street view. So we're gonna focus on that and start to look at how do we refresh that view so that it looks like the lights are on here, that there's activity, that people are thriving in this place. Because you are, right? You already are. So let's share that with the Grace, well, not just Grace, but with the Iowa City, Coralville, the whole um, corridor here. So what you see here through the middle, that phase one, the white, is what we're looking at adding on. And the gray are parts of the building that remain and then the future is outlined. So that first, that north side, that's what we were just talking about, our visibility, our entrance, our hospitality from Dubuque. And what we found, we looked at a lot of different options for this, a lot of different ways we could phase. Do we, what, and what parts of the building do we keep or not keep? How can we use the investment that's already here to leverage current and future ministry? And what we found is that with this approach, we've moved the addition to the south side. We're keeping this space, we can use this space, and redoing that middle section, so where the current foyer is, taking that out and rebuilding that area. What we found is that we get kind of a center building. So what we get, let's see if this will work. So we get our building kind of centered in our site, and we get, to, we get this nice, all the way around. So we've lost all of our dead ends in the south. We can get all the way around. We can get in, get out very clearly. And what we've added is another main entrance. So we have got the two entrances here now, north and south. And what that allows is to bring people in from all sides of the building into the center, into the heart of that connecting lobby space. So if we go to the next slide, we can see what that looks like in detail. So we can see our hospitality, our refreshed view from Dubuque Street and how we can come in from both north and south into the center here where we can see all of our ministry spaces and how we're serving all of our ministry goals. So we've got our worship right here off that main space, off the heart. We've got our kids over to the right and we've got additional education and hospitality towards Dubuque. See What we see all the way here, so this is where we're talking about kind of removing the core right through here, refreshing this space to get those medium-sized rooms, those education rooms that we're lacking, and getting our worship space at 800 seats with a plan for growth. And again, this is just one option. As we're looking at a phase one and a phase two, there's a lot of detail and a lot of variation that will come out of that and we'll look to find the right solution as we move forward. This is our starting point. And then to mention the gray is kind of the existing spaces that we wouldn't be touching in our first phase. So we maintain that gym use totally. Okay, let's move on to our phase two project. So our phase two, this is where we look at the 1,100 seats. 
that's where we needed to be if we we're going to serve 1,750 people. And that's just a simple double. So right now we're 550 seats, 1,100 seats are just a simple double of this space. So that's why we're looking at that as a goal. What that means, so we mentioned the 550 seats at the top. So what that means is that, well, we need a little more education space. We need a little bit more room in our hospitality areas. We need just a little bit more in all these different areas to serve the people that are here, that are coming here. And what we end up with is we end up with that at that bottom. We end up adding about 38,500 square feet to the total building. So. And uh, let's not forget our parking, because when we're serving that 1,100 seats at that two-to-one rule we were sharing earlier, we're going to need 550 parking stalls. So let's look at how that plays out on the site on the next slide. So this is the phase one and two plan combined, is we're really maxing out what's happening here on this site. So we are showing, and we'll start with that in terms of the parking. We have the same visibility from Dubuque, but what has changed is the parking piece. So we're looking for that 550 parking stalls, but this site is looking like we're only gonna get 500 stalls. So that's where we're looking for um, staff, volunteer leads to take the initiative to look at parking off-site. So that, that would be until, until an opportunity may or may not become available to uh, expand in either the east or west direction. The other thing you're seeing here, going back to that visibility piece from Dubuque, is that in this phase one and phase two, we're refreshing all of that side. So you have a very new Grace community presented to the, to the larger community, to the Iowa City, North Liberty, and Coralville communities. Overall, we're basically, we're covering most of the building. So it's a very fresh face from all sides. There's a few places that we'll be looking at refreshing in other ways, but it's, it's, a, it's a new uh, approach to the building. And let's see, parking. Yeah, Nicole's talking in my ear to mention parking distances here, which is a good thought. Similar to the phase one plan, both our north and south entries allow us to keep that parking walk within a nice 300 foot radius. And the reason we do that is because of that lovely winter we have in the Midwest, especially in the upper Midwest. So 300 feet is when folks start to feel a little uncomfortable about that walk in the cold. I mean, I, I do. It's not my favorite. <laughs> so that's kind of our, our rule of thumb for when we can keep our parking within 300 feet. That's when we feel comfortable walking in that cold. After that distance, it becomes a barrier to coming to church. And that's not what we're about. We're about removing those barriers as much as we can. So let's look at what this looks like in the plan. So if we go to the next slide. Okay. Our main point, our main here, let's start with Dubuque Street again. That vision, that identity to the community. Our lobby, so we come from into our lobby, right through into the core and into the heart again. But you'll see here that expanded north face. So that identity has expanded now all the way across that the north face to the view. Okay? And we do that with additional administration and additional education. So the other things that are different here is you see how we expand the seating. So in phase one, we planned that worship space so it can expand. So we can get to our 1,100 seats, get to that simple double, and get to our goals. The other piece of that is the education. So what we've done is we've continued to add education. And the nice thing about this is we start to be able to secure those kiddos in a new way where we have a secure hallway here. So your youngest group, your youngest age, can be down in this area, and we can have our older students out here, which allows us to keep this lobby area 
open. So if we look to expand to the east or for any of the parking on the east, there's another entrance into the building. So we have entries from north, south, and the east that allow us to fully encompass that site and bring people into Grace Community. We've also planned for if what happens if Grace continues to grow at the 7 to 10 percent? What happens if more land becomes available to Grace in the future? What happens if we decide that it's within our, vision, our ministry vision to continue to expand in place? So that would be our next look if we go to our next slide here. So what if we did that, we would look at going to a second floor. So this plan is showing the second floor of what could be here. And there are some challenges with going to a second floor. So when we start to introduce the second floor, we start to introduce an accessibility issue, just like we have now with the students at the mezzanine level. That's not accessible to all people. And so we would plan for that and manage that with things like an elevator, very clear wayfinding, very clear visibility to the various parts of the building. But overall, what this allows us to do is this allows us to gain another 550 seats in that worship space to so that total 650 seats. Allows us to increase our education and increase some administration area, all of these things supporting those ministry goals, biblical counseling, building up both adult and kids' education spaces. So all of that kind of works together and comes together to support what's happening here and in the community at large. So here you can see this, this building gets to be up to 121 plus or minus 1,000 square feet. So this is max size somewhere long term in the future. But we want to be mindful of that and plan for that as Grace Community will look different 10 years from now. We don't know yet what those needs are going to be. So we want to make sure there's a plan for you to grow as you need to. So if we go to our, la our next slide here, here you can start to see how we're thinking about that phasing between phase one and phase two. So the lighter green is our phase one. So that's our 800 seat plan. And that's where you can see this outline here, what we're looking at removing and our remodel. And then our dark green is what we're looking at for remodel and adding in a phase two. And just remember, this is something that will continue to be studied. There are options within what's phase one and what's phase two. But we're looking at it as a fluid and flexible piece right now. And I'm going to give it back to Nicole here. Next slide. So what is our scope in our program? This is a, a briefly look at this slide. So we're looking at a phase one, 800 seat. And what is the program that goes with that? Um, parking um, in alignment with our priorities. So you can start to see uh, the additions and remodels that we're looking at for phase one and then a phase one and two 1100 seat uh, to go with to 1100 seats the lobby that goes with that the restrooms uh, and then we, we could only get up to 500 parking stalls on site um, that's kind of our maximum site <laughs> capacity uh, and then we've got more improved education spaces so this is our program um, and then our next slide is what we've been looking at as our preliminary budget goals. Now these are really high level. We have not had a contractor peek into this. Matt and our team have talked. Um, but this is a concept only. We haven't done an estimate. So these are allowances just so that we're, where are we using some high level um, goals? And we need to verify these, which we will in the next phase uh, with our uh, contractor partner. Um, that is going to come on board soon. But you can see when we're looking at phase one, the expanded worship to 800 seats, the hospitality piece, exterior identity, and improved education, we're just shy of $10 million at about 9.8. And this is a project cost. So this is construction as well as any fees, furnishings, and equipment that might go into it. So a full um, project cost. 
plus any annexation to the city, which we've been talking with the city about, um, which would add anywhere from three to $350,000 to our project cost. Um, if we were to move forward with 1,100 seats um, and the phase one and phase two plan, uh, or a variation in between, but this is kind of how we've set it up for today, um, we're looking at about 17 and a half million as a project cost plus the annexation to the city. But that's why when Mandy's look, we're looking at the floor plans, you know, we're going to be sitting down in, in the next uh, design phase with staff again uh, to clarify the priorities and the leadership uh, and looking at what's the appropriate phasing plan. So that may tweak as we go forward um, and then they also based on your feedback today. So but again, we're looking at anywhere from a 9.8, 10 million to 17 and a half um, as a phased approach to the project. Next slide. A possible schedule, I chart for you. Um, but generally speaking, and again, we, we say these schedules are, uh, they vary by a season or two, and we are following how the Lord's leading uh, grace through the process. But right now we know momentum's been going on since fall of 2018 and will continue. Um, and I know we'll get an update here at the end. The next phase, we've got the design phases. We might start this fall. We call it the schematic design phase. Um, and maybe we go into design development, which is the second design phase. Um, and then construction documents. We still need to get city approvals. Um, so doing those design phases and city approvals may take us through April of next year, April or May, um, and then doing competitive subbids. Well, we might be under construction this time next year. If all the approvals go well and, and we align the, the budget uh, and scope together. So we'll be looking at that. So this is one snapshot of a, a, a project schedule for design. Um, with the construction starting maybe next summer and ending the following summer of 2021, where you could be in here celebrating the fall kickoff, potentially. Um, but that is, this is one possible schedule and it may vary. And I know that your team will keep you abreast on how that's going um, if that shifts for us. So that's kind of fun to see where that might live. But here's your hospitality today. Can you see the view? That's probably okay. It's really dark. Um, but it's even pre the, the updates that Ryan and his team have done, um, have completed for you, um, kind of the older chandeliers and things. But imagine what your hospitality after might be. So here's a preliminary view that we prepared. Next slide. Of what that might look like. So imagine if you're standing on that front entry that Mandy was talking about on Dubuque Street. And this is while you're walking into the space uh, and looking to the south. Uh, to the right is your uh, hospitality, welcome, and coffee. To the left would be your restroom and kids check-in. Do you see the green down the hallway? That would be your kids check-in. Um, and then a clear view to your worship. So it's really uh, quite expanded. It would be about 100% the size of your worship center. Uh, Everybody could see where they're going, where the kids' areas would be, where hospitality would be, where those multi-use classrooms would be. Um, what's behind us is a, a nice glass open uh, view that would be to Dubuque seat, Dubuque. <laughs> so um, what an opportunity for you to bring in, build up, and branch out, and to be a tool for you to reach more people for Christ. and to be a place, um, to be a movement, and reach people, uh, multiply the kingdom. We are so honored to have been on this journey with your team. Mandy and I pinch ourselves every day that we get to work for you, and we love it. And so we hope you're as excited about this plan as we are to show you today. Uh, so at this point, we'll take questions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ryan's. Okay. Uh, go ahead to the next slide real quick, Judy. Um, go ahead, Floyd, if you want to help pass those out. Um, one other thing, too, to bring up, I'm going to bring up Matt Keister. But right now, Floyd and Terrell are passing out a handout that has some of the information on here. So 
when we get to the question component, you'd be able to refer to that. The other thing, Angie, may I have your flyer real, your handout? Okay, so when you receive your flyer on the back, right by the Grace logo in the very back, you'll see the phone number to text that, so you'll be able to text it in. So if you want to, you can start texting us uh, questions now. Uh, we'll start kind of filtering those out. But if you get the handout during the time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bring up Matt Keeser. He's going to talk about uh, kind of the next phase of our building committee of our general contractors. Alrighty, uh, I'll start out by talking a little bit about myself, Matt Keister. I've been coming to Grace for about two years, probably a little over with my wife and two daughters. Um, I'm a project manager for Ryan Companies up in Cedar Rapids. Uh, I've been working for them for four years and then I worked a couple years for a different general contractor up there. But I'll be talking about the request for a proposal or basically we're going to uh, get started selecting a general contractor. So in the next three to four weeks, we will be sending out a, a proposal to gather, we're hoping to get at least five general contractors to um, submit on the project. They will uh, submit references, similar projects, um, and then we'll be collecting those and it'll be based upon fee and qualifications. So of those five, hopefully we'll interview, we'll narrow that down to three, similar to what we did for the design team. Um, and we just wanna make sure our vision and our partnership is gonna be good throughout the two year journey that we just talked about through there. Um, there's three main phases of design, which is schematic design, which we're going to be starting here shortly, design development, and then construction documents. The goal is to bring the general contractor on to help finish and develop the final design. That way, you can stay on schedule and stay within our budget. Um, once we have that contractor selected, we'll send it out to subcontractors for bids, and then we'll start construction. Uh, we'll get a monthly update from the general contractor and we'll also meet with them uh, at a minimum of twice a month. And that's really the next step. Um, thanks for coming in. If you have any questions regarding the general contractor, you can stop by and talk to me after this. Thanks. All right. All right, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Now it's the fun parts. Uh, and go ahead, like I said, go ahead and submit your question. I'm going to bring up Martha and Chris Engel right now to, to the um, stage. They're going to help to facilitate some of the questions or pass it on to our team as well. Dave, David, you want to go ahead and turn on the other mic? And go ahead and flip one more time to Judy so we have the questions. We'll have this right here, so that way if you want to text the questions, uh, Angie and I will be filtering them in. If we don't get to your question at this time, uh, we'll try to answer it at a different avenue of venue. So, Kristen and Martha, go ahead and come on up. Put them up there? No, we're not putting them up there. Um, go ahead, David. Hello? All right. All right, so we have kind of our first question right here is, in phase one, where does where is the space for nursery two year olds and three year olds during phase one? <laughs> the space for the nursery for the little the little guys. Yeah. Um, so we're still in the very preliminary schematic design, so we haven't really gotten to that yet. Um, I think that's right, right? <laughs> we can talk to them. We can yeah. talk to it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. We're just supposed to give the mic to people that know. Yeah. <laughs> so I know that, you know, we kind of blew out the, the nursery and twos and threes in, in the phase one plan. So what we were looking was putting the littles um, into the secure zone. So we would be relocating um, maybe zero to kindergarten, third grade, and then maybe moving the older kids out into the remodeled multi-purpose space. But again, we're real preliminary. Um, so we've been talking through different ideas with that. So we need to sit down with kids ministry and work through that 
um, with the phase one plan. So we'll identify that tighter. But those were some preliminary thoughts that we had. Again, they need to be vetted. All right, our next question is. <laughs> we don't, we're, we're just supposed to hand the mic up. <laughs> if we only do, if we only did phase one right now, what would the negative ramifications be? You can answer. Okay, go for it. Well, if we do phase one, phase one right now, the way it stands, and, and Terrell just brought up a good point that we might change from phase one to phase two doing first. So. But the ramifications if we do phase one first would be that we increase um, the lobby and the sanctuary here, but we would not increase the education. We would have to use the gym for part of the education. So that would be the negative outlook on that. And that's why what we really optimally like to do is if we had the money to do phase one and phase two together, because it's actually cheaper than having them set back up. So that would be our goal. Um, from a building committee is that we do both of them at the same time. If we can't, then we do have to, uh, if we decide uh, there was a possibility that was just brought up today, do we do the education before the worship? And that's something we need to hammer out. So, I mean, uh, we don't have it set in stone which phase we're going to do first. But there's limitations to both. If we do the education first, obviously, then we're going to have a little bit limitation. And, and Pastor Brooks talk about possibly doing five services until we can afford, uh, but that was what we talked about. So um, so there are limitations either way we, we go from there. So did that answer that? Yeah. All right. Will we need to meet off site during construction? Yes. <laughs> yes, I can answer. Yeah, and the possibility, just to answer that, has there been any, uh, Verification, like from the North Liberty High School, because that would probably be our four, first choice, right? If since it's so close. Sure. Um, right now, we have not had communications with North Liberty High School, but one thing is that we're also been trying to talk with Station 19, especially if we did the face project and start over here with the auditorium side on the west side. That we'll have operations regarding to our offices on the east side. That would be able to be be still be here on site. So that way we have some our administration office and other programs here. Um, and then hopefully transition once this is site complete, then we can move over here. And if we did uh, one and two at the same time, we'll do look at hopefully to do the same process as well too. Uh, but regarding to our overall Sunday services, yes, we will need to look to meet at larger facilities. And ideally, the perfect world is that we look into the auditorium at Liberty High School. That seats about 800 seats right now. All right. Okay. Seeing that there will be parking on the current leash field, the leash field is a grass area between the gravel parking lot and the garage, will Grace Community Church be hooking up onto the city water and city services? Yeah, that's one of the first things we're going to look at is getting annexed into the city, become part of their um, city services, get rid of our septic tanks, and that was... What was that, like 200,000? 300. 300? Yeah, but that is definitely a primary thing that we want to take a look at. And it increases our parking, too, as well, so. Oh, yeah, because now we can't park on top of... You can't park right now. Anyway, yeah. you, you can't park right now on on, uh, on the septic field, obviously, that's out there. So the nice thing is that we do get annexed in. Yes, it costs us money, but it also opens up our parking to get that 500 and minus, plus or minus, right? Okay. Uh, so it does benefit us to annex in. Um, there's other some other ramifications as well, but um, to go forward, we probably need to annex in anyway. Did we not? I mean, was that what we came up with? Or? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. All right. Does preliminary schedule cover both phases? Does a prim preliminary schedule cover both phases? Yeah, yeah it could. Yep. But this year, the year would be one. You better talk about well, <laughs> construction might be a little longer if we need to phase the construction, um, but the design schedule could remain the same. All right, this one is going to be a multi questions in regards to our children's ministry and gym usage. 
comparing our, our current situation to the phase one scenario, how much increase would there be for the children? Is a gym being repurposed for educational space? And concerning that phase one puts kids ministry in a bind. We can remodel the gym and create about anywhere from four to five rooms out of that space, potentially, uh, for kids ministry. Um, there are different scenarios and options that we can do within that space, but the conversation thus far has been how can we preserve the use of gym or multi-use space while also having some kids education space. We know that the kids' education, we're going to increase the education space, but not where we would like to in phase one. Uh, so that's what we're saying. We're increasing it a little bit, but it's it's not where we want it to be. So. I love talking about the roof here at Grace Community Church. <laughs> Are there any issues with water leaks from the roof confirmed by the team? And how would that be fixed? And how will previous damaged areas be fixed? Just to let you know, my facility thing, we were up on Thursday and patch up the roof. So thank you to my team. I heard a clap. Thank you. Um, so are, would there be any issues regarding to the water leaks in our lovely flat metal roof? We would replace the roof. <laughs> thank you. All right. When the crowd goes wild. Um... The rest of the ones right now are mostly related to children's ministry. So let's start with uh, this one right here. Why are the elementary grades combined in phase two? Why are the elementary grades combined? Oh, because they're separated now. Um, it, it's a concept. And again, as we would move into the next phase, we're going to collaborate with kids' ministry and work on that. We were trying to find the right amount of uh, spaces and maybe grades that we've seen in other with other clients at this point, but we're going to sit down with that team and clarify how they want to do kids ministry and, and break up the rooms. We've done that once, um, but we're going to do that again as we, as we move into the next phase of design and get more detail on schematic design um, on those rooms and what's in those rooms. Good question, though. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this might be more of a Martha and also Nicole question. Does the project cost include F, F, and E? Yes. Fees, furnishings, and equipment is the acronym. So the cost that you saw include that. What we typically do in a project cost is we say 80% is construction as a concept and 20% is for fees, furnishings, and equipment. Um, so we'll be budgeting that and working with your contractor uh, to budget that and, and manage that piece. It is mentioned about more costs with each phase separate. So if we separate phase one and phase two, how much more is uh, phase two separate? Well, phase two is separate. If we do it separately, say it's 10 million, it's seven and a half million separately if it were done today, but what we budget is about three to five percent in increase in costs uh, with construction. So uh, again, it'll be higher, um, but the difference is about seven and a half million plus three to five percent per year for whenever that construction time occurs. That's what we've been seeing in in the market. So can you can you uh, compare that to if we did them both together versus separate? What was the numbers again? Can you make that clear? If we do them separate, phase one is 9.8 million. The phase two is 7.7 um, .7 million. Um, but together they would be 17 and a half. Is that yeah, so do we save money by doing them together, I guess is the question. Three to five percent. Three to five percent a year if you delay, yes. There's an economy of scale, believe it or not, 17 million. But I mean, when you, the, the more building you be, the build, there is a, a, a balance of the cost per square foot for, for the products and, and bringing the team on. You've got to mobilize the team again to do the second phase. And if it's in three to five years, there's kind of a ramping up. So you're paying for architectural fees again, and um, maybe revisiting some things. Um, so, would there be any outdoor ki uh, kids' play space? 
There is a little bit shown on the plan on the south side. It's pretty limited, so um, very astute question. Um, but we've been identifying and preser preserving a portion on the south um, end of the building in the sun and fun spot um, for our kids play area. But it's certainly not the size that you're accustomed to um, in what we've affectionately called the toe of the site. Um, but um, it's, it, there, it's, it's li more limited than what you're used to. In all the scenarios, do we continue doing three services? Does this work in regards uh, for staff and volunteers? You would probably stay at three services at the 800 if you continue to grow. What we were projecting on the growth slide, um, I don't remember which slide it was, but if within three years you would probably be at three services again in the 800 seater. You would probably not need to move to three services in the 1100 seater until um, out 10 years beyond. So beyond 10 years, so maybe in 12 years, if you were continue to grow at that seven to 10 percent. Did I get that number right, Andy? Yeah. Uh, eight to 10 years. Yeah. Are any of the walls in the multi-purpose room movable? Are any of uh, are the walls are any of the walls movable? We were thinking that um, the large room we might keep full fully open. So on the western half, um, again we can study that if that makes sense to be able to divide it with a quality movable partition. Uh, we were looking at the two smaller ones uh, to be dividable um, right out of the chute, so you could have a nice larger room and then dividable into two smaller ones. So 20 person rooms, bigger 50, yeah. Okay, so they're 250 person and one 300. I'm glad I have a friend here to help remind me. So, um, so yeah, it would be really nice variety because a lot of our clients right now, um, the prime space that clients want in our, in our ministries is that 50 person room. Um, that's the one that's booked all the time. Um, this one is more probably for Nicole, but also might be good for Martha and Chris to talk about our experience regarding to more parking and parking garage. Okay. Parking still seems to be limited on both phases, especially phase one. Given your experience with cover walkways in Minneapolis, what are your thoughts on adding cover walkways to allow for the convenient outward expansion of the parking later on? And also maybe also uh, talk about our experience looking and vetting parking garage too. Want me to take that? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So we did look at an option of putting a parking uh, deck on our site. But in our experience, <laughs> it adds, you know, we say for a parking stall on grade is $2,500 a stall. A parking stall in a parking garage or on a deck um, is about $25,000 a stall. So we did look at that. Um, with your team just to uh, discuss it, um, but it was Very a brief briefly. discussion and we were done. <laughs> so uh, that's where when Mandy was talking about the long range plan of if you're able to acquire property to your east or the west, um, that will give you the relief valve to do that. So that's been what we looked at. So we, we did for a second take a peek at it, we drew it. But it is in the trash. <laughs> um, if you're okay, maybe I'll take this question since I had some prelim um, experience. But regarding to annexation and two interests, I thought our request of, for two interests has been denied. Has that changed with this project, or is there is there a risk that will still be denied? If it is denied, does that affect the uh, plan significantly? We are um, annexed to Johnson County right now, so we follow by co county codes. Um, even with the City of North Liberty codes, we just need to have two entrances, a minimum, minimum of 300 feet. So we are well, um, we are well uh, good with that, to have two entrances. However, we are not able to have two entrances that leads out to the side road of Naples or, or North Liberty Road due to the farmland around us. But we are able to have that. And with the annexation, a linear foot of the sewer and water line along with 
Um, the two interests, it runs about $320,000, but that was about estimate two years ago. But we have not applied for that, and we will work with a local real estate lawyer to work on the annexation and get into city uh, parts. Um, which one should we go next? Has the addition of a Saturday night service have been considered to lighten up the Sunday load? <laughs> yes, I think it's fair to say pretty much everything has been considered. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say one of the issues is when you start adding, putting on somebody four or five services to preach, it gets to be pretty heavy. Say that again? Uh, I was just going to say once you start asking somebody to preach four or five services, it gets to be a load. Not that it can't be done, but it's it's a, a tough pull every week. But didn't they try it for a while? Didn't they try like a Saturday night <laughs> for a while? Pastor Paul? Just quickly, in that sense, yes, we have done some Saturday services in the past. Um, the reality is it, it's very intensive, the sustainability of that for us as a church, for all, not just whoever's preaching, but for all staff, for all leaders, for all volunteers to make that go well. It's a very difficult pull. So, um, we can continue to explore all things, everything from the table, but that's just the reality of our ship. All right, we are kind of approaching our end of our time of our Q&A, but we want to provide one more question that I think helps to kind of wrap up regarding this process is, would there be another all-church presentation when the details have been determined um, that might be a good one to actually hear from Nicole regarding that process. Absolutely. Uh, I think we, we're excited to show you this preliminary master plan and phase plan uh, to get your insight, but there are definitely, with the questions, which are very astute, we have some more things to work on. Um, and what we would like to do, and it will depend on your team, um, is to come back and share those with you. Um, it might be after schematic design or design development, so one of those two phases. So it'd be pretty. It'd be before we go into construction documents. So, again, to show it something that still we still have some design work to do on, but get more details when talking with the ministry teams. So. All right, that's going to end for our Q and A at this moment. If there were questions that were unanswer. Um, we will follow up either with a written document or something on the website to provide additional. So thank you. We have these information right here. Uh, go ahead, go to the next slide. Judy, I'm going to bring up uh, Pastor Paul, and he's going to talk about the next phase regarding to our momentum that we're going to be having come here towards the end of uh, August, and also close us out anywhere for uh, probably one more slide, Judy, to the two momentum. There we go. Perfect. Fantastic. Okay, now I know what you guys really want to do is be here till at least 5 o'clock. So we'll try to stretch this on till then so we can make that goal. Uh, but no, then we'll run out. I'm going to let you go as soon as we can. We do want to give you a few closing thoughts um, about momentum specifically. But just uh, even before we do that, can we just give it up for our thanks to Station 19? So as we talk about all these things, I think it's got to be very uh, carefully noted as we're going into this. Not people, some people didn't seem to also grab a full awareness of this, so I want to make sure that this is perfectly clear. A lot of times people wanted to know as we were going through momentum, well, how much of momentum, how much, how much of our way is that like 90% of the building that we needed to do? And so again, to be perfectly clear, momentum has never been about providing a building. It's been providing about the traction we need to get going in the right direction. So specifically, there's three areas, if you remember, that we said as a um, church that we were addressing. First of all, we're addressing the community. And when we say that, we mean grace community and how we're doing as a church. That we continue to provide ministry opportunity. The reality is, is that even if we do absolutely nothing with a building, we're still called to make disciples to make disciples. We still have something to do, and God's kingdom is going to be advanced. We're going to do the best we can with what we have. So momentum was firstly about reminding ourselves of this truth. Uh, secondly, the momentum was also about, and continues to be about, our corridor. And when we say our corridor, what we mean is how do we continue to influence the gospel, this area, this place. And until this point, we were able to vet through what our various options are, and that's what we have been doing throughout this time. And so, so key, and so um, important.
important as this time being to date. And we're going to continue to go forward with that, but we need to come to a place where we also make some decisions about what we do then in terms of the building. And the building you have seen today, at least two firm things have been presented for us to be considering on. One is doing it in a phaseability, where there is a part A, and then there's later on a part B, or phase one, and a phase two. Um, it would be, in all things, honestly, it would be best if we could just do it in phase one and two. But that's going to be wholly dependent upon what does God have for us to do, and what do we want to do as the church. That's stuff for us to pray about. And thirdly, the thing is, is what we're still about as a church is that we are here to um, take the gospel to the ends of the earth. So we had a bucket, if you remember, for our community. We had a bucket for our corridor. And we have a bucket for the world. And we're going to continue to give you some strategic updates of what we're doing as a congregation to be more effective than ever about taking that hope of the gospel to the ends of the earth. Um, so very specifically, a few things to let you know about. Um, if, you, if some of these things are new to you and you came in being part of Grace Community after last fall, uh, you've heard some updates and momentum. You've seen like the videos we saw in service today. You've come to this meeting, um, but you still really haven't wrapped your head around everything what momentum's about. On August 25th, which is Sunday at the end of August, uh, we are going to be having a, basically an on-ramp time for those who have never been part of momentum. We're going to walk through a little bit more in detail of what that looks like. We're going to give you a clear path forward of how you not only join the effort of what we're doing here at Grace Community, but more importantly, continue to walk out the mission that God has entrusted you. It will begin that day, and it will go on beyond that day. On August 26th, for the rest of us, please put this on your calendar. Please put it in pen. Please circle it, and please highlight it, and then please be here. August 26th is our opportunity to refresh these things that we are talking about as a congregation to make sure that we're moving forward effectually together. You know, check it out. Jesus' prayer for his followers is the same he had prayed for us today as well. Father, I pray that they would be one as you, as you and I, the Father, are one. That we would have that sort of dynamic relationship. So regardless of what we do next, what is critical and what is essential is that we love one another well and we reflect Christ accurately. Jesus said, by this, all men will know that you're my disciples, how you love one another. We want to continue to be a church with momentum that moves out and makes disciples who makes disciples and doesn't hold back. So that's where we're headed. Um, we're going to stand together because this is for us to commit together to the Lord in prayer. And if you can, grab hands or a shoulder or someone who's nearby you here. Uh, this is something we're just committing and asking the Lord's guidance, the Lord's help um, as we close out from this pivotal time. And it's my heart that you look back and say, hey, I was there at that meeting where we really made some, um, really saw some things begin um, for what the Lord would have for us next. Let me pray. Father, as we stand here together as your church, your people, we ask for your guidance. We also just thank you so very much just for the opportunity to be able to network with our friends and family of uh, Station 19. We thank you, Lord, for all the service that has gone in here with the building committee. We thank you, Lord, for our leaders and our elders and all the folks that continue to serve uh, tirelessly here at the church for your fame. We pray, God, that you continue to give us a clear focus of what it, it takes for us to take the next step in making disciples that make disciples. We would pray, Lord, that this fall we would only gain momentum for your kingdom, that you'd be glorified and you'd use us in significant ways uh, in the road ahead because you are such a great, big, mighty, and kind king. And so uh, we bless you today. We thank you for this time. Urge your people forward and help us, Lord. And we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming. Thank you for spending the time. Yeah. Thank you for watching this video of the All Church Building Update at Grace Community Church presented by the Church Building Committee and Station 19. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to contact us at office at gracebe3.org. Thank you again for watching. God bless.